Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Nine Lives of Dawn. I remain your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we're going to have a 2v2. Another request. We're going to be between Sparkles and Enfer versus Man 12 and Catastrophe. So, recently high level game on Desert Needle Small, a map we haven't seen in forever. For kind of good reason, but it should be fine now. Actually, I think last time I played this was before I optimized my setup so that it wouldn't slow down in large games. So we should actually be able to see Desert Needle Small with all the units it's going to have because this map is a feast map. Oh boy, is it ever. So we're going to be seeing everyone with like 40, 50 metal per second from the first couple minutes into the game. And all the units that means. So this is going to be a giant game. At least as far as unit count goes. But that shouldn't be a problem. Anyway. Should probably point out. Catastrophe going up for a Clickbot Factory. Mana 12 going for Jump Bots. Already getting some Pyros in. We have Sparkles on Rovers and Hovercrafts for Zenfer. I haven't seen a lot of Hovercrafts on maps of this size before. Or, I'm sorry, maps of that much water. I mean, yes, there is water, but you're not... I don't think you're going to get to that with Hovercrafts. No, you're not going to get to that with Hovercrafts. It's too steep. Amphbots might be able to. Hovercrafts can't. Basically, that's just there for show. But for right off the bat, we already have... I don't really want to have that. That's kind of annoying. All right. So first off, power coming in here. Not managing to do all that much damage. Does manage to scout a little bit. At the same time, Northeast hasn't really had a chance to see what Southwest is up to. So this could be fine. Might not be a problem. But again, it's still a matter of Northeast has been revealed a little bit more. Mana 12 already had the label Mace. They know what's up. They know there's a hovercraft coming in here. Response going to be Moderator, which is a good response. Maces are right, units, moderators are skirmishers. It's a pretty simple setup. And also, moderators are just kind of annoying to deal with. And they slow things down. I'm actually kind of curious. Are we going to see halberds coming in, or daggers or something? Or is it just going to be pure mace on top of fencer? Because at this point, it looks like it's going to be mace on fencer. That might work okay. I mean, it's not a terrible option set. It's just... I feel like you're kind of limiting yourself as far as being able to disrupt your opponent's economic plans. That's the one thing. Especially since they have cloaky... And a bunch of glaives, and we can start seeing some raiding going on, as well as some pyros coming in that have also been doing some raiding, but I guess that pyro was dead. So pure moderator coming in from mana 12, which, again, makes sense. Same time, is it just going to be Ronin? Ronin? Yeah, okay, so a handful of glaives to rove around the map to try to find what they can. And then a bunch of Ronin to actually play defense. Wipe out some of the vehicles, wipe out some of these fencers. Or just in general be a good choice to have against the mace. The moderators will do a great job, but the Ronin are going to be... A bit more directly effective against fencers. Just because of the fire rate. Oh, wow. Northeast has no idea what catastrophe went. They went for cloakies. Oh, cool. Okay, so at this point... So, I mean, cool for Southwest. Northeast hasn't actually seen what's going on. This is what I was talking about. Northeast has no way of knowing what's happening. They haven't sent in anything. Oh, never mind. Okay, Zenfer. Do you know this? You don't actually know this. Oh, I see. No, they would have seen some of the, the glaives. Okay, so they have actually. So Northeast has seen enough of what's going on. The chat was misleading me. But yes, they do see that the glaives exist. That it is against. Okay, well. say it is against Glowkey. The Ronin are doing a fine job. No, they're not. The mace was close enough that it actually caused problems. But again, the moderators are more the thing that's being used to try to deal with that. Not so much the Ronin. The Ronin, I mean, in large enough numbers, should be able to. There's four of them right now down here. So it shouldn't be a huge problem. And again, we're up to the point where the players could start building fairly large armies. Like 30 metal per second each. Southwest team currently just getting up the caretakers needed to actually start using that money. Northeast team was already way ahead of that. They're, they're fine as far as spending the money goes. So Northeast team will have no problem dealing with excess or anything like that. But more importantly, they have no problem raiding out their opponents. I mean, wiping out the center of the map, making sure that no one can take the center and hold on to it. At least, none of the none of the people with more of a bluish tinge to their team color right now. None of the Southwest people. They're done. And actually, there aren't even enough Ronin to get rid of their fences, as we saw last game. Just don't have the numbers. At the same time, Glaive's coming in over the south side of the map, but not really able to do much. Just being taken over by Dominatrices, and they should be able to wipe out some of them. But again, the fencers coming in here will help, won't save. Oh, no, will save. Oh, for a second, I thought they'd actually kill with friendly fire. Still, though, over back to the western side of the map. 
this northeast team continues to harass and continues to do quite a bit of damage over there and basically take, okay, takes out radar, takes out a bunch of metal extractors. There's no defenses here. There's a Lotus. That's not going to be enough. At the same time, the northeast team is slowly grinding forward, but they're making sure to put defenses up where they need to. Just to make it that much harder for a counterattack to come in here. And of course, they have the fencers coming in, which are essentially just mobile pickets. But now we have enough Ronin. Now there's enough of the numbers for the Southwest team to be able to actually start wiping out the fencers and force them to retreat. This is what I was talking about with numbers. You get enough Ronin, and they actually start doing a, doing a bit of a number to vehicles, making it hard to push in with fencers. Which makes me wonder if we're going to see a shift, but it looks like no, pure fencer dominatrix. And again, I'm not sure I agree with the Dominatrix either, considering the amount of Ronin that are being built. Actually, considering the fact that we have a Firewalker being built on top of that, the Dominatrix, more of a problem as far as the Ronin are concerned. Like, the the Firewalker will be an issue, but it's more of an anti-defense issue. Like, like I said, Northeast team is defending as they build. Firewalker is really good at wiping out defenses. So, good choice by the Southwest team. Good choice by Manu 12 to go for that. Same time, the Southwest team looks like they're primarily building just Ronin. I have a fusion plant as well, but mostly just worried about getting up all the Ronin, which I totally agree with, because that's going to be the thing they need to do. That's how they're going to win this. That's how they're going to wipe out all the fences within just a cloud of missiles coming at them. On top of a cloud of fire coming at everything else. Should be killing one of the dummies, actually. No, just damaging them slightly. At the same time, it looks like the Northeast team might be doing a bit of a factory switch. At this point, the Southwest team has a gunship plant. They don't have any other factories on top of that. They're just going for the gunship plant. On top of the fusions, looks like they just want to have as much overdrive as they can. Which makes sense. At this point, the map has been basically taken, and there's not a lot of easy reclaim. There's a bit of reclaim up here that's, that is being taken, about 500 metal worth. But otherwise, the map has been split in half. So, apart from some really good assaults, the Southwest team is going to be having what they have. Makes perfect sense to go for as much energy as possible. And that is working out fairly well. It actually is the reason for their economic advantage right now. Is, that, is the fact that they have the overdrive. Although, to be fair, the army value right now in the southwest, it looks like they actually are at a bit of an advantage, at least positionally. The fences are coming in to counterattack over to the south as the southwest team wipes out parts of the north. But it looks like the southwest team is going to be coming in with the Ronin. I'm not really liking the fact that the Ronin are in single file. The Reavers should, or sorry, the fencers should be able to wipe them out, no problem. Now, if they hit the Ravagers first, that'll be perfectly positioned. But if they get to the fencers, the fencers are, well, actually, I guess they're both going to kind of be going alongside each other. So I suppose that's not too bad, but yeah, not great. Still though from here, actually, yeah, the, the Ronin are in the perfect position to get rid of the Ravagers, and they are going to go for it, but again, Ravagers are more of a thing you deal with using, well, using fence, using Reavers, not using Ronin. Also, Blastwing's coming in. Gun gunship switch has been done for the Northeast team as well, going for Heavy Blastwing. Southside going for a Crow instead, and I'm not really confident of the Southwest side here. If pointed out many times before that, especially in the mid-game, whoever builds a large number of smaller units and manages to keep them alive is usually going to be better off than people who, than the, the person or team who builds a single large unit and expects it to get a huge amount of value. I mean, it might get a lot of value. It's a crow. It's very strong. It's basically a flying strider. And there isn't much to actually deal with air forces except the dominatrix, so unless the crow itself gets captured, it's actually a pretty good shot of the crow dealing quite a bit of damage. It's just a question of how that crow approaches things and whether or not the dominatrixes do cause problems. I mean, Mana 12 is aware of the dominatrix threat, though, and they are able to wipe out some of it, but not really enough. I mean, unfortunately, the dominatrixes are a little bit too far behind, so the moderators are just hitting the maces instead, which isn't really doing a whole lot of good, I'm afraid. I mean, getting rid of the maces is fine. It's... It's still going to be a useful tool against the, the crow if the mace exists. So yeah, get rid of the maces, but the dominatrix, that's the threat. That's the main problem. The crow, however, is up, and it is actually going kind of away from the dominatrix threat. It's trying to avoid them, or at least going through the center of the map, which is reasonably far away. I'm not entirely confident it's going to work, especially considering the fact that the northeast team coming with a bunch of ravagers over to the north side of the map has pretty much free reign. There is nothing to stop them. There's a sniper doing what it can to thin out the forces, and there are ronin around flanking, which... Actually, it might be enough. That sniper is enough. That sniper does hold off the Ravagers, force them to retreat, scatter them a fair bit, and the Crow as well, providing a massive threat. There isn't really much in the way of anti-air to actually deal with the Crow. There's a few Swifts being built up, but it's not really enough. And that Crow should be able to just bomb everything out on here. 
The Lance, a few minutes away from being done, it is not done in time. And there's the bombs, getting rid of the airplane plan to stop any anti-air from coming in to stop them, or at least stop any air-based anti-air. Gunship-based anti-air and ground-based anti-air, yes, that could happen, just planes no. Nat coming in to try to stop it should be actually successful. The Nat's able to completely stun out the Crow in the middle of the Northeast base. Is there a follow-up? That's the real question here. And it looks like no, the Southwest team just lost their entire Western expansion has just lost their crow as well. There's nothing that's going to save that crow. It did manage to do a fair bit of damage wipe out of factory, but there's no follow-up force able to come in in time. And at this point, the Northeast team, they basically got this. This is what I mean. This is why I always say, if you're dealing with attrition, sorry, attrition, if you're dealing with large units, you got to be careful. Like, it's often better to go with the smaller units because it's harder to just wipe out a massive chunk of your opponent's army in one go. Like, that crow did not make cost. Or barely, I guess you could count with the fact that it got rid of a factory, which... No, it didn't make cost. Nowhere near. Factories are 800. That crow was, I think, 4,500? Yeah, 4,500. No, that was not worth it. And the Southwest team is going for it again. I mean, I should point out that the attrition was actually massively in favor of the Southwest team by about the cost of a crow until the Northeast team killed that crow. That being said, the Southwest team has managed to rebuild in the western side of the map, but they still lost that expansion. They still don't have a huge amount in the way of defenses to stop any Raptors from coming in there again. And at the same time, a bunch of anti-air has been built up. Like, the element of surprise the Crow would have had has been lost. I mean, the element of surprise the Nats have has also been lost, but the Crow was killed, and Nats are way cheaper, so it's totally worth it. That Crow, unfortunately, did not manage to accomplish all that much, I'm afraid. But hey, it certainly tried. It certainly did a fair bit of damage, but just not enough. And at the same time, Fencer's coming onto the south side of the map to try to wipe out Mano 12's commander. Not really sure what's going to happen. It looks like the Crow is going to wipe out the Fencers. But the question is whether that's going to happen in time. The Stinger's doing a pretty decent job defending against the Fencers, but not decent enough. Wiped down to four, but that's the Fencers down. The commander is totally vulnerable. Mano 12, get your commander out of there. I realize the Crow is coming in to save it, but the commander is not going to survive if the Crow is at all too slow. Oh, the commander... Oh, man, Manu 12 played that risky. Way more focusing on getting that stinger up than keeping the commander alive. They could have very well lost it. And with that, lost pretty much all the ability to project force over to the south side of the map, outside of the crow. But they do have the crow, and they do have a nice, juicy target to the southeast to wipe out with the crow. So overall, that's actually all right. And in the center of the map, the southwest team is actually doing okay defending itself. Getting rid of a few units here and there with the gremlins. Getting rid of at least a Nimbus. And on top of that, Halberd's not... Okay, the Halberd's not really doing much apart from scouting for the Northeast team, but that is still good. That being said, the Northeast team does have a lot of reclaim to work with. They haven't even taken the Crow reclaim. They have other reclaim on top of the fact they have a singularity reactor for the extra overdrive. While the Crow has taken care of everything to the south here, just about everything to the south, not going around, surprisingly enough. Thankfully for them, they do have a fair bit in the way of Trident, so the Crow is going to be reasonably well guarded. But, of course, the problem is still, that's a lot of gnats. That'd be like three or four gnat shot volleys, like a few seconds before they're gone. And a bit of a waste of a D-gun, too, I'm afraid. That's a shame. I mean, Trident should be able to stop the gnats, maybe? It's kind of hard to say. Now, the Tridents won't be able to stop the gnats from stunning out the crow. They will be able to stop the gnats from keeping the crow completely locked down. So, this is still good, but... Ah, oh, the flail coming in there for the hovercraft again. Flails are probably some of the best anti-air units in the game, so... Still really good. The Nats, however, have been wiped out enough that this is no longer a stun-locked crow. It can move back, it can heal up, and at the same time, the north side of the map is actually getting more and more in favor of the southwest team. They able to wipe out basically all the forces coming in to try to reclaim, take out all the welders, take out the Nimbuses, probably from there be able to take out this northwest base, and then possibly take it for themselves. If Southwest manages to do that, they should be able to get back in this game, but right now they are still at a bit of a disadvantage. The crow has been helping, it's been projecting a lot of force. And it's forcing a lot of kind of iffy plays. Because it's forcing a lot of anti-air from the Northeast team that otherwise they don't need. So it's still good. But I'm not really confident that it's going to be the best option overall. Looks like we also have a bit of a cloaky sw switch coming in. But I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. However, there's a tank switch that's come up. And, okay, Ogre and Emissary. I like it. No Ogre Emissary mix on top of everything else. And or, what are we seeing here? Another factory? Oh, another air factory. That makes sense. Yeah, get another air factory up, get more get more planes to get rid of the crow, because that crow is a big problem. The flail is doing a good job, the chancellor is doing a good job, but again, that's a lot of anti-air being invested to get rid of the crow, and if the crow survives, 
Well, that's more forces that are not being spent on the ground. The only downside, of course, being the Northeast team had a lot of reclaim for a while. They did, they did have a very strong economy compared to Southwest, and they still do. So the Crow really does need to survive. This is a game of attrition, and the Crow is actually going to go down to the... Nope, that's not going to go down. Not quite, not quite yet. But yeah, if the Crow does not survive, then it's totally worth it. But if it does survive, those flails... That's money that could have been spent to help deal with the Reavers and Ronin. And it's currently not being spent to do so. Although, unfortunately, we're not seeing things like Irises to come in and make the Reavers deal that much more damage or be that much more effective. Which is a bit of a shame, because the Dominatrix would have been dead if it weren't for that. And that's the one Dominatrix left, too. So if that goes down, it's all over. But yeah, it looks like we aren't seeing a catastrophe thing to go for Irises, even though we've seen before that Irises are extremely powerful as a force multiplier. Same time, Owl coming in here. Very nice play. I love this. Owl coming in should be able to see exactly what's happening. It will be able to see the Singularity Reactor. That is important. The Singularity Reactor is not going to be make or break as far as the economy goes for the Northeast team. But, I mean, it is a juicy target. But at the very least, the important thing is that the Northeast team has been completely exposed. The Southwest team knows exactly where they need to send their crow or any other units that they want to send them anywhere to heal. Or not to heal, to fight. Or send a scorpion. Like, cloak it in. Go around the back, actually. That could work. And if you do that and get rid of the Singularity Reactor, it's going to work all right. Same time, though, the Reavers were completely out of position to help deal with these Scorchers, and the Scorcher Force should be... No, they're fine. They're going to get in the, into the base, wipe out a bunch of metal extractors, probably able to wipe out a bunch of wind generators as well. Reavers are coming in to try to save the day, but it's going to be way too slow, I'm afraid. An Imp or two would have been great just to have it on top of here, just to stun out anything that tries to get through, which... Again, when you're playing Cloaky, it's kind of tricky because you don't always think about things like imps or irises, like tricky units like that, but those are really handy, especially when you're fighting against vehicles. Still, though, the Crow is able to come in to save at least some of the metal extractors, and considering the wind generators are supplementary power at this point, primarily for overdrive, that wasn't a massive blow. The Southwest team is still fine. They, they lost 10 metal worth of metal extractors, or 10 metal per second worth of metal extractors. That is still bad, but it's not the worst thing in the world. However... Anti-air is clearly no longer the focus, and that means that the Northeast team is going to have a much easier time, an increasingly easier time, defending the front lines. On top of having a bunch of these emissaries just wiping out all the stingers, so yeah, Northeast team, they're kind of just winning in terms of how well they can project themselves safely. Like, they can just slowly grind out this game moving forward, and there's not a whole lot that the Southwest team has right now to deal with that. They have the Scorpion that's, come, that's just about coming up, 10 seconds left before that's done. Once that's done, it's going to be a bit of a different story, but it's not done yet. And it, even when it gets done, it's still going to take a little while to get forward to actually deal the damage it needs to do. But, oh, never mind, there is another Scorpion already here, so it's actually pretty likely we could see a possible turnaround. Scorpion goes and disables all these defenses and wipes out the emissaries and everything. It could work, but again, that's a tricky thing. At the same time, the Southwest team trying to go for the Northwest expansion, being rebuffed quite a bit by... Ooh, I mean, that rebuff, that being rebuffed, making catastrophe just want to give up, and I don't agree. I think, I think they have a chance. I think between the two scorpions, there's actually a pretty good chance, or three scorpions? Yeah, three scorpions. Between the scorpions, used properly to wipe out some of the defenses with a follow-up force afterwards, that could work. I mean, if the scorpion goes to the north, allows for catastrophe's follow-up force from all these units, it would be fine. And again, if catastrophe went for an iris, this would be a completely different story. If Catastrophe got an Iris, this entire force would be able to wipe out everything, no problem. Scorpion, first shot coming in there, wiping out a bunch of maces. Not a huge amount of damage, but still not bad. Does open things up a little bit. But, of course, the problem is, what about these flails? And the Crow not trying to engage them. Going to be retreating from those flails, forced back. But how many flails are there? That's it. These are all the flails in the game. So, yeah. Considering that, it looks like the Flails are not going to be a major asset as far as the Northeast team is concerned for dealing with the Crow. And again, Dante's and Scorpius coming in here. I mean, like I said, Northern would agree with a lot of heavy units, but there's enough light units to follow up for any openings the heavy units make. But at this point, that Dante's not going to be able to really make any openings other than its own corpse. And also, I should point out, Iris has been built for the Northeast team. I kind of hope the Southwest team would get ideas from this. But it doesn't look like that's happening. At the same time, a bunch of ogres coming in here. Scorpion should be able to wipe out most of them, if not all of them. Go for the scorp Go for the one that's not hitting you. What the heck, Scorpion? Oh, sorry, the one that is hitting you. My bad. Still, though, Crow coming in. Able to stop the ogres. 
Adding a lot more reclaim. That's that's good. And actually, with all the scorpions on the map, this is kind of hard to predict. I mean, the Southwest team is so far behind economically, it just feels like they should be losing, but they've also managed to make up for it with attrition as well as they have, and honestly, I'm not really sure. It's going to kind of come down to how much these scorpions are able to open things up, and at this point, I don't say they are. Like, they really aren't finding the openings they need to actually deal with stuff. Ooh, and that Lance getting a very nice shot off on the scorpion, unfortunately not cloaked in time. That scorpion moves back, it'll be fine, but everything's going to fire at that scorpion, and the second scorpion is right next to it. It's going to get hit by the Lance. Like, what are you doing, Manu 12? Move it out of the way! Ah, uh, and the second scorpion has been exposed. That should be lanced out in a second. I mean, with two lances coming in here, no, these scorpions are... This scorpion's dead. Or actually, no, it's not. Not quite. Able to survive that so far, but... Eesh, still heavily damaged. That's kind of the problem. At the same time, a bunch of blasters coming in to wipe out as much of the force as they can from the Southwest team. Like, the Northeast team is doing a great job just defending, and again, as I mentioned before, they can kind of dirtle. They have an economic advantage. They have a very large economic advantage, and while they are losing on attrition, I think they held back just a little bit. And again, with these Irises, they don't even have to hold back. Just move forward into really strategic positions and wipe out what you need to. And that'll be it. I mean, as it is, Catastrophe's already lost the will to play. So, the Northeast team just has to make Mano 12 think that there's no way to win, and then they win. They wipe out the Crow, that'd be game. And, again, they can cloak everything in to wipe it out, and there's the Lance... The Lance set coming in here! Four Lances on a single Crow! It's able to survive that, but that is a lot of damage. That's enough that it's going to force it to retreat after dealing a little bit of damage back, getting rid of one of the Lances, but that's not really enough. The Firewalker, however... Oh, just fire on there. Just hit where the Lances could be. That'd be perfect. What the heck are you shooting at? Seriously, what, what is that thing shooting at? Okay, I'm not sure what was going on there because... It, was the radar telling it? No, they had full vision of the area. Weird. Not sure what that Firewalker is firing upon. But it isn't a bunch of cloaked lances that would be heavily damaged by a Firewalker firing upon them. I don't think a lot of players really know how to deal with irises. I, I get the impression that it doesn't come up very often. So people don't think about how to deal with just a wide area disable or wide area attack. And I mean, the Scorpion, that was the right place to go in the right time. But even then, the Scorpion's only able to disable for so long. Got rid of the Iris, though. That, that's good. Did get rid of one of the Irises, but there's still another Iris backup. So it's not quite over yet. At the same time, north side of the map, we have another Scorpion coming in. Should be able to get rid of Sparkle, this Commander, and a few Caretakers in the Gauss Cannon, but not able to get rid of the rest of the defenses. I mean, overall, I feel like I like the idea of the Scorpions. I like the idea of having these forces here. They're very strong, doing a lot of work. It's just that they aren't actually managing to make any openings. They're damaging a bunch of units, sure, but again, Southwest is way behind economically from Northeast. Northeast can afford to lose these units and still be fine. Southwest can't. If Southwest is able to break through the defenses, it's going to be a totally different story, but they aren't, because the front line's about it. If the Scorpion managed to detail a bunch of stingers, cut open a hole in the defensive wall, and then go through that... That would be it. That would be the Southwest game. But that's not happening. I mean, the South side kind of is happening. Four Scorpions against a few Lances. Scorpions are winning, despite the Lances being cloaked. So that's good for the Southwest team, but still not great overall. And looks like, well, as much as maybe players in general don't have the easiest time dealing with cloaked units, Zen for sure knows how to. Throwing out the Phoenix is there to make sure they just wipe out the Scorpions simply by area bombing. Good call there, Zen for. Really kind of wish we see a Thunderbird or Scorpion... Or sorry, Thunderbird or Phoenix do the exact same thing to all these Lances here. But it's not going to happen. Still, though, what is going to happen is the Lances are going to go down. But unfortunately, that D-Gun only hit one of the Lances. Not both. Same time that the Dante is actually getting closer. It's getting dangerously close to this force. I mean, the Stingers here, there's only a couple of them. They shouldn't be able to stop the Dante if the Dante goes in. And actually, how much do they know? How much is known about that. Okay, everything's known about that. There's an active radar there. That would be a good idea. Throw in some radar here, please. Like, radar on this hill or something. But, yeah, if you throw in radar there, that would at least allow them to see, okay, this defensive line is it. And that would be it. But that's not it. Also, throwing out... Throwing out an anti-nuke against a force that's actually not comprised of a lot of nuking. I mean, I, I get why the Antony's being thrown out. It's 25 minutes into a 2v2. This is around the time you'd start seeing Trinities. But no, we're not going to see that. We're actually just going to see a continued 
use of striders as frontline units from the southwest team which at this point i mean the numbers are actually high enough it's working out all right but oh but this thing is not it's on hold fire it's not attacking there we go unfortunately one of the stuff the that scorpion could have been saved that second scorpion was when attacked the first scorpion could have been saved at the same time, Blast is coming in to wipe out a bunch of Catastrophe's forces, or at least heavily soften them up. That keeps happening. But hey, Catastrophe has the Iris. There we go. Catastrophe has a chance of actually breaking a hole in this defensive line and pushing forward into the base. The Iris is up. And the Dante is down. But the Scorpions are kind of doing their job, breaking through lines. I mean, the south side is actually pretty vulnerable. The Scorpions are doing a fine job wiping that out. Same time, though, Crow coming in here from the Northeast team. Oh, that is, that is kind of amusing. Sparkles with the crow. Should be able to wipe out. There's a fusion plant that's gone down. The, the singularity reactor is still up. But the southwest team, they kind of need as much power as they can. If the singularity reactor goes down, that should be game. The crow is completely unopposed. There's another crow going, tr trying to deal with it, but it's not happening. It looks like Manitol doesn't want to give up yet. Surprisingly enough, they're about to lose the singularity reactor, and they are not giving up yet. But Catastrophe has gone down. The Singular Reactor goes down, wiping out basically all of Mana 12's units. Or at least a lot of Mana 12's units. But Mana 12 still doesn't want to throw them to hell. They are still committed to playing this game out. I mean, at this point, it's one on two. But they have the Dantes. They have the Scorpions. They are punching a hole through the defense and doing exactly what I wanted to see done earlier. Mana 12's going for it. I think they realize this is all or nothing. This is it. If they don't get it now, it's over. And it looks like that is probably going to be over, but I don't know. That loss of power is huge. The Southwest team has no overdrive anymore. They're a third of the metal. Like, the only real advantage Southwest team has is the good attrition they've had. And that means they have to basically be able to wipe out the production ability of the Northeast team right now. And Manitoba realizing they cannot do that, throws in the towel, and that is game. I mean, for how much metal use disparity there was, that was a remarkably even game. Like, army value was... Army value, metal used. Just amazing attrition coming in there from the Northeast team. Sorry, the Southwest team. It was a little bit iffy at the start where they lost a crow for basically nothing. But after that, really good army value. But the problem was they just didn't break through defenses. Really, it's not a problem that numbers express. It's a problem of positioning. The problem was there was all these defenses here that allowed for the Northwest team or Northeast team to continue building up no matter what the Southwest team did. Like, if the Southwest, the Northwest team, sorry, the Southwest team had gotten some raiding going on, gotten, I don't know, Blast Wings maybe, something in the back lines. Like, some way of getting into the back and wiping out the stuff that the Northwest team, sorry, Northeast team had built, then the Southwest team would probably have been able to just break them, just with a better attrition. But they never managed to open a hole, or even just get an Iris sooner, maybe send one of the Scorpions to wipe out some of these defenses, send the cloaked units of the Iris all the way into the base, and wipe out everything here. And maybe wipe out some of the stuff in the back, too. If that had been done, I think the Southwest team could have easily taken it. But unfortunately, there was never that big push because... I guess there was an uncertainty about how exactly to push. But again, that was kind of do or die considering the economic disadvantage the Southwest team had. I mean, to be fair, that would have completely nullified the attrition advantage the Southwest team had. Because the Northeast team could have just wiped them all out. But at that point, I don't know, it was kind of hard to say what other way to go. And... Really, when you have that many Reavers and Ronin, and they can't do anything, it might be a good idea to cloak them and then send them in cloaked. It does wonders, really. Especially when you have Scorpions there. The Scorpions, the entire point of the Scorpion is to, is to wipe, is to EMP a giant swath of the map. And then come in with other units. Most EMP units, the point is to come in with other units to clean up the mess. But we never really saw that happen. So yeah, that was that. And... I'm going to have one more game today. It's going to be Zenfer and FFC on Aurelian. Because I I like this map. I want to see more of this map. I want to, It's a good water map. So yeah. The Zenfer and FFC on Aurelian. Because I'm sure at this point something good has happened. I mean, FFC is watching right now. They might be able to tell me whether or not this is actually a good game. Because for all I know, it's a terrible game. But I'm guessing it'll be pretty good. I mean, good players on a good map should be a good game. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes.